everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a look using the new Charlotte Tilbury Desert Haze Palette. I've also got their bronzer, so I thought I would use a foundation of theirs. It's not going to be a Charlotte Tilbury tutorial, but I thought I might as well do the base makeup using the same brand. To start with, I'm going to apply some of the Aborian Matte Cream. I've not used this in a little while in a tutorial, but it is still one of my favourite mattifiers. It is a Korean skincare brand. They smell nice, they're really good in terms of the ingredients they have, it's great for your skin, and it does what it says. It does mattify the skin, um, it fills in the pores, which I have a few deeper pores on my nose and around this area, which we like to refer to as the area that looks like orange peel. So this is a really nice one, it's quite lightweight, smells lovely. So overall, it's a really nice one to use. It is a little bit expensive, but you can buy the slightly smaller versions, which is great if you're traveling. And a little goes a long way. I've definitely put too much on my hand there. Some silicone ones tend to pill up a little bit on the skin, but this doesn't do that. So as you can see, that instantly mattifies this area of the face. I tend to be quite shiny around here. So it definitely does what it says. Then I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. Again, not used this in a little while. This is one I tend to keep in my makeup kit when I'm doing weddings or makeovers. It is a fan favourite of mine because it gives you the full coverage, but it is quite weightless. I have Neutral 6. Oh. <sighs> so you only need a pump and a half of this. A little goes a long way. So I'm going to use my fingers to work this onto the skin. Even though this is full coverage, you don't have to have a full coverage heavy base. There's a lot of pigment in this foundation, so you only need a very small amount if you want the coverage, but that you want that lightweight feel to the skin. Um, blending in with your fingers is going to give you the most sheer coverage because you can really blend it down, but without that weight. Gentle swiping motions. And then anywhere that you feel you need more coverage, you can just go in with a concealer. That's kind of the point of it. There's no point in wearing a super full coverage foundation than a super full coverage concealer because it's no longer needed. The idea it really is to only conceal those areas that need more coverage. So now I've got a very thin layer. It wasn't even a whole pump that I used, so I've actually wasted a fair bit of it on my palette. So I'm going to go in now with the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Concealer. This one is very, very hydrating but it doesn't leave a tacky finish if that makes sense it's the only concealer i can use where it doesn't enhance the fine lines i do have my natural eye socket lines which everybody has i don't need to color correct yet um that might come in time and once that starts to get a little bit less firm if that's the kind of way of saying it, concealer can start to sit in those areas when the skin warms up. So although there's no getting away from concealer moving, your best bet is to use one that works for you. It is trial and error. Just because it works for me doesn't always mean it's definitely going to work for you, but this is a really good one. So I like to mix the two shades. I've got light and medium. Light goes right on this inner corner because this is the area that tends to be quite dark. Um, and then I apply a little bit down here, just where that little dip happens. And then again with medium and just apply a little bit in between on the outer edges because this one is a bit more like my skin tone and a little bit around my nose where I get a bit of redness. To work that onto the skin I'm going to use my Zoeva 227 soft definer brush. This one is a synthetic bristle brush. It's soft and fluffy so it's a really nice one to work the concealer onto the skin. I've said it a million times, but if you're new to my channel, then using a synthetic bristle brush is the best way to work with anything that's cream or liquid because it doesn't clump in the bristles. Basically, that just means that the bristles will start to kind of stick together and when you're trying to blend it onto the skin, it's just a mess. So these ones tend to still separate. Even with concealer on, you can see they're not clumping together. They are staying as individual little hairs, which makes blending that much easier. So when blending out your concealer around your eyes, we want to bring forward that little dip. So that's the area that needs to be the lightest part. So we put the concealer in that area and then just blend around it. You can pat it in if you don't want to move it too much. Um, if you've got quite a puffy eye, you don't want to put the lighter concealer on that area because you're just going to pull that forward more. Instead, if you need to conceal it, use a colour that matches this part of your skin. The area that needs to be the lightest is the part that sinks because we want to pull that forward. Anything that's puffy, we want to push back. So that is the best way 
to conceal under your eyes to add a little bit of brightness but to counteract the natural dip that we all have. You can use products that have more coverage than the one that I'm using here. Because my under eye isn't necessarily dark, I just want a little bit of brightness, I'm using a product that is geared towards that so it's a little bit more of a lighter coverage. I also like to pat it in with my finger because I find that just gives the most natural finish to the concealer. You don't have to have a sponge to do it, you can use your fingers, they are tools um, and they will work just as well. So as you can see it's nice and bright but it doesn't look like I'm wearing a ton of makeup and it just has kind of concealed a little bit, it gives the illusion that this is a little bit less deep. So as you can see my base makeup looks a lot more flawless and a lot more even. I'm now going to go in and use the NARS Smudge Proof Tinted Eyeshadow Base. This one has a little bit of colour to it. This is medium and this works brilliantly as a concealer as well. Because it is smudge proof it really doesn't shift. So if you want something with a little bit more coverage, um, something that kind of mattifies and conceals and evens out your skin tone, this one's a really good one. I'm going to use it just on my eyes today. I'm going in with the same brush. I'm just going to buff that over the eyes and use a bit of a stipple motion to blend it out. So this is neutralising the eyelid, ready for eyeshadow. This is a great one to use if you are using bright colours on the eyes because it is a tiny bit lighter than the skin tone, especially if you order the light colour rather than medium. Um, it makes the colours pop more because having a lighter base underneath just makes the eyeshadow look more true to the colour that is in the pan. I always like to use my ring finger to press over my eyelid very gently just to help kind of press that into place. You'll find that it just makes the texture of products look better when you've used your finger over the top rather than just a brush because it gets rid of any tiny little streaky marks. So I'm going to do my eyebrows using my Urban Decay Brow Blade in the shade Cool Cookie and I will leave a link on screen for you now just to show you how to create the eyebrow look that I'm doing. That's my everyday go-to brow look and then I'm going to move straight onto the eyes. So the Desert Haze palette features a nude, a peachy and smoky brown hues and I'm starting with the prime shade which is the lightest shade in the palette. Although this is a nude it does have a kind of warm undertone to it so it is a little bit more peachy than you might anticipate when it goes onto the skin. I personally would have liked this to be a little bit lighter so you could use this as a matte highlight. Next I'm going into this kind of warm brick shade and I'm using a flat eyeshadow brush and I mixed in a tiny amount of Define which is the darker brown just so that the smoke shade wasn't as warm. Next I'm taking a tapered blending brush and I'm dipping it into the prime shade which is the lightest shade and I'm going to use this to buff over the seam of the brown eyeshadow. Now don't worry if this comes off a little bit ashy to begin with. We we're only using this as an aid to help the blending process into the socket. We don't want to take the colour up too high and we don't want that to look any darker going up so we're going to use that same shade to blend and then we'll go back in and repeat the process with the smoke colour to warm that back up and it will no longer look ashy. You might be wondering why I didn't use this colour to buff out the seams. I didn't want it to be too intense, I want this to just enhance that warmth in the socket, I don't want it to overtake it. So that's a little tip for you. Blend out with a lighter shade first and then go in with a slightly medium shade so you don't have to take it too high. Once we've got that in place I'm going in with a clean blending brush just to make sure it looks seamless as it edges up towards that brow bone. So you should have something that looks like this. Next I'm going to use the classic eye powder pencil by Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Audrey and I'm going to take this across the waterline. As you can see this is a beautiful brown, it works perfect with the Desert Haze colours because it has that gorgeous smoky brown finish. It's a very soft pencil so you get a wonderful colour payoff. I'm also blinking onto the tip of that pencil to line my upper waterline to get rid of any pinky tones. And then I'm going to enhance my top eyelash line by running this close to the root of the eyelashes, going about two thirds of the way across, making sure it gets smaller and closer to the root of the eyelashes the further in I go. Then I'm going to take a small detailer brush by Zoeva and buff over the top of this to make it a bit softer. It also tends to make the line a little bit more uniformed. 
Then I'm going to dip it into the Define shade from the palette, which is the darkest brown, and buff over the top of this to soften it. As you can see, I've made this thicker on the outer edge, so although I'm not winging it out, I am making it a little bit more almond in its shape. And I've used a little bit of what's left on the bristle to take that into the outer socket, but just keeping it at the very outer third. Next, I'm going back into the Smoke shade, and I'm redefining that socket line. I've applied a little bit more of the smoke mixed with define on the actual mobile lid itself and now I'm just redefining the socket. Blending that eye pencil out on the outer half of the mobile lid is what's giving the eye a bit more of an almond appearance. However, I have created a more rounded overall smoky eye because I know that will suit a lot more of your eye shapes. Taking the smoke shade on a small detailer brush and buffing that underneath my lower eyelashes following the shape of the lash line so it's still rounded and bringing it down quite a bit to give it a smoky feel. When I got the Desert Haze palette I also ordered the Marie Antoinette Eyes to Mesmerise so I wanted to use it today. It's completely up to you if you want to keep it smoky and matte like we have here but I'm going in and I'm going to lighten the eyelid a little bit using this shade. Having the Desert Haze Dark Smoke underneath Marie Antoinette is going to give it more of a deeper bronze feel compared to how it would look if you applied it with no smoke underneath. And using my brush, I'm really buffing it out. So it is only a very light layer, but I'm applying a little bit more just in the center so it's a bit brighter, which helps to make the eyelid itself look a bit bigger. And as I buff it towards the back half of the mobile lid, I'm not taking it as low because I don't want to cover up the eyeliner. Feel free to keep it to the Desert Haze palette and continue on with the rest of the makeup as I'm doing. I just really wanted to try this colour with the Desert Haze palette underneath. On my small detailer brush I'm taking a small amount of the Define colour and I'm enhancing the outer third of the socket. After receiving such a great response on how well these eyelashes sat and looked on my eyelash video, I decided I would put them on today because you guys wanted to see them in another look. I had so many DMs about them. So these are the Ardell Double Wispies 113 lashes. They are stunning. And the mascara I'm using on my bottom lashes is the Atlashed Mascara by Marc Jacobs. To warm up my face, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. This is in shade 2 medium. The brush I'm going to use is the Blooming Brush by Bare Minerals. As you can see, it's slightly angled, which is great for sculpting the face. So I'm just going to softly run that through the cheekbone. As you can see, it naturally creates a shadow and it just helps to sculpt the cheeks. Although you're bronzing, you are also sculpting the face. If you want it to be more of a contoured look, you would use a bronzer that's slightly cooler. So I'm letting the brush do the work for me and then buffing that colour upwards. I'm also taking it across the cheek area as well because it is a bronzed look. So this is the area that the sun would naturally hit. Taking that around the top of the forehead. You can swap brushes if you need something that's slightly smaller, if your forehead's quite small and you want to apply a little bit of bronzer but you don't want to really change the shape of your forehead or the appearance of it, then just use a smaller brush. Now remember, don't go crazy with your bronzer. Always apply it to kind of match your skin to your body. I tan really well, but obviously I cover my face, so I need to go a little bit more intense just to kind of help match the skin. Next I'm going to a tiny amount of this Swish and Glow Cheek to Chic by Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Pillow Talk. If you can hear a noise outside, it's the ice cream van. Decided to park right outside. So you just swirl your brush in it and then tap off all the excess because there is a lot of excess. And this has a glow product in the middle and then the blush on the outside. So by mixing it together you get a beautiful kind of shimmery tone but with blush at the same time. So I'm just popping this on the apple of the cheek. It's going to add a glow but a very subtle flush of colour as well. I love the glow that these products give. Not always on myself. But my skin's been really lovely just recently since I've been using the new Dr. Sam Buntin um, skincare range. My skin, I've so noticed the difference. If you want a review of it, let me know. So I'm popping that onto the apples of the cheeks and pulling it backwards to meet the bronzer. This gives a really glowy look. It's lovely. I'm going to take a small amount of the actual glow from the centre and just pop this on the brow bone. Just make sure you work it backwards and forwards. If you don't buff it, then it won't look as smooth. To make that inner corner pop a little bit more. Tiny amount on the tip of the nose. I haven't done that for bloody years, I don't think. And also the cupid's bow. 
let's make it a bit more glowy it's funny because the desert haze palette is all about the matte look i just wasn't feeling it i don't know i don't know if i love that palette so much but we've gone glowy instead this week i received the new fenty beauty slip shine lipsticks so i'm going to pop one of these on today this is the beautiful packaging gorgeously shaped let me just show you the one i'm using i've already applied it a couple of times and i really like it they're more like a balm hence the name it's been described on the website as a latte nude but on my skin it just gives a bit of a peachy nude which i really love and they really do feel like a balm with a glossy finish and there are 10 shades available all universal i'm going to set the skin using the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless powder this really does create a flawless finish to the skin it really does look airbrushed i'm only going to set underneath the eyes across the forehead just take down a little bit of shine in the areas that i don't want it to be shiny So overall, I like this makeup look. I decided to pop a little bit of the Eyes to Mesmerize in Marie Antoinette purely because I'd not used it on my channel before and I wasn't feeling the look as much. I just, I think I've used creamier matte finish eyeshadows. They kind of felt a little bit patchy. It's more the build up of the brown when I'm talking about patchiness. Um, it's just more the layering. It kind of didn't layer on top of itself very well. So... I would say if you're going to use that for a smoky eye then I would apply a brown pencil all over the lid first and then give it something to stick to so that the layering isn't an issue and you don't get any patchiness. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you thought of the palette, whether you think you're going to use it. I will list and link all the products I've used in the description bar below. Um, if you've got any comments or questions or suggestions for tutorials please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. As always thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!